Hi. Welcome to the bathtub. This is the old master bather wishing you all a happy new year 2023. Many happy bathing. Much happy bathing for everybody. Um, I put it away. Just so you know it's the new year. We bring out the traditional horn. That shows you that means it's happy new year 2023. I'm the old master bather aka Green Lantern. That's it. I'm wearing this shirt because I work at a I started working at part time at a in a UCD shop at a comic book store. So this is this, this is the heights of achievements. I've I've scaled I've scaled all the heights that I just had to I had to scale, scale one more of my 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 aging body. And so I started doing working in this part time place. It's kind of a trip. I, I don't want to describe it any more than that. And uh, they found one of these in the attic. They found they were throwing a bunch of stuff away. And I and I said I'll take that. And I'm wearing it. That's how, that's how much time we spend getting stuff properly putting on a good show for you guys. If someone found this and they were going to throw it away and I took it. Okay. Happy bathing to everyone. Happy 2023. I think we said those things. Um, we're uh, talking briefly again, two quick ones because we really fell behind over Christmas. I completely forgot I had to do anything. I really didn't think I had to do anything. Pure mountain water, post tech, no pixels. We're charging into a new decade of non technophile, non technophilic literature just books and, and just a good reading lamp. That's all, all the technology you really need is a good bright lamp. We're going to do another in our long running and possibly forever running, uh, if we're lucky, forever running series called uh, Simonon Durs and Not So Dur, which is Simonon's hard novels and not so hard novels. Basically, the hard novels are anything except the May Grays, and the May Grays are the not so Dur ones. They're the lighter, the more. The, you come to the end of a, sim, a May Gray book and you feel a little bit, you're about as comforted as you could feel in a universe of total, total depravity and despair. <laughs> because, because May Gray goes home to his wife and has a nice dinner. <laughs> so whatever horrors he discovers or sadnesses or, or infidelities, he goes home to his wife and they're quite happy together. And that's what the, that's the great charm of these books. Um, I, we, we have a, also kind of coincidence happened here. So we we mentioned this uh, several several months ago in in my typical fashion is you know and again anyone who anyone who writes down any information I give them on this show it takes any word from me as as far as anything I say it is is making a mistake. So don't ever quote me on anything. Double check anything. I don't really check my facts before I do this show. If I had to check my facts, I wouldn't do any of these talks. Because it just makes it boring. But the long story was, I confused this. I called this another book of his. I think it's called The Black Rain. Yes, Black Rain. I have another copy. And I confused those titles. Uh, the Snow Was Dirty was, was published in English many, many decades ago. As I believe Black, Black Snow or I can't, don't quote me. But anyway, it had, it had similar Black Snow or Dirt in the Snow or something and I used to, that was one of the very first Simonon books I read when I was fifth, when I was in my late teens. And um, I want to say it was called Dirty Snow, but then there's Dirty Rain. Anyway, I get all black rain. It's black rain and dirty snow. And now there's a new translation called The Snow Was Dirty. So out of all this confusion, I mentioned it and we got, had a nice little note from a, a corrective. He was nice, but he was stern. From the translator, the excellent translator, uh, from what I could tell, I, I'm not uh, Howard Curtis. So we got we got told off by Howard Curtis himself. Told told me to know us. I used the wrong title, and and I corrected myself, and somehow that brought this to the to the surface. I I picked this up as soon as it came out. That these this new translation series that that Penguin is doing again. They've retranslated all of the May Grays eighty eight. Or so books plus it, there's some short story collections still coming out, and then he wrote a hundred and more of these so, more darker thrillers, sometimes called the hard novels, the Dura novels. Um, I was thinking of the thrillers and the, and the kind of mysteries, kind of uh, the the dark side and the lighter side. And mysteries always end up there's always a solution to life at the end of the mystery. Anyway, that's a long way of saying I finally sat around down and reread this. Let me start with the May Gray defends himself. So I have this is I'm getting up into I'm really getting to the downhill side of the whole May Gray series. There's maybe only fifteen or twenty left to go. This is the fifties, my favorite period of the the May Grays of the fifties and this uh, late 
late 40s and th through the 50s, when he really settles down in Paris and we don't travel around. The early Maigret's, Simeon's traveling around the world a lot. So he has Maigret traveling everywhere, too, because I, yeah, he's not spending much time in Paris. But he's back in Paris. He hardly leaves Paris in these novels, these wonderful novels. And in this one, it starts off him being reprimanded. He's being reprimanded by some boss who doesn't really, who's this new elite um, group of civil servants are taking over the police departments in, Par in Paris. And they don't really care about these old farts like May Gray, who sit around drinking all day and smoking and buying sandwiches for the people they're interrogating. He uh, and he's they're they're looking for excuses to yell at May Gray. At the very beginning, he gets kind of call on the carpet because a woman, a young girl from a fairly good family, accuses May Gray of kind of sort of taking trying to take advantage of her, and uh, it, it's May Gray going out to defend himself. It's all an earlier per, a translation of this was called May Gray on the defensive, I think Howard, if you're listening, but uh, I I have that uh, that volume somewhere too. I love all the new translations. They're effortless to read. Whenever I start a Simenon, I never think twice about reading. I just, just read through it. I don't care. It, it just it goes by so fast. It's always so enjoyable. And they get better as I get older. So I really enjoyed this one. It's about him going out to, to clear his name. And, of course, he does. Cheers, Maigret. Now, here's the one I read. I hadn't read this since it first came out. It is one of the considered one of the it's one of the best regarded of 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 Simenon's thrillers. It's also translated by Howard Curtis. So Howard Howard Curtis did both of these. That was the coincidence I wanted to talk about at the beginning. And uh, it's a wonderful, well, wonderful. It's a dark and disturbing and fascinating book. It is sort of it's in some ways it's got a kind of a allegorical focus to it, which is very unusual for Simenon. Simenon usually sets his stories in very discreet, just clear places, New York, Paris, somewhere in Belgium, uh, some, some small city outside of Paris. He always locates his stuff in, in the world and in time. And this one takes place in a kind of a, a vague place. It's basically an occupied territory. So Paris, while it's occupied by the Germans, yes, probably, but he never calls in the Germans. He never calls it Paris that I recall now. It's just a kind of a territory. It's about a young kid who grows up very early in the book being raised by a mother who's a prostitute. And he's raised in this, this bordello. Places that, by the way, when you read about Simenon's life and his autobiography, he spent a lot of time in these, 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 these bordellos or whorehouses. And it's about all the women he spends his time with and his own relationships with people and with his mother. And within the first few chapters, this kid does something that he calls himself. He says it's like going around the bend. He wants to go outside of the, around the bend of human life. He wants to go outside of the kind of normal. This is a very common theme in Simenon. Everyone goes to work, does a job, and cleans the house every Thursday and does all this stuff. But... His characters want to go out beyond the kind of bourgeois, middle-class home life. And even though it's not bourgeois for this kid, he wants to get outside of this family, this, this life of his. And he becomes a criminal, and he goes off, and he's hanging around, he's like 18 years old, and he does some pretty horrific things in the opening chapters. You, you, it's, they're not visually d disturbing, they're not violent, but they're very disturbing emotionally because you see what this kid is doing to himself and the people around him, and particularly with this girl he likes and how he feels after he does this kind of horrific thing to this young girl named Sissy, I think. Then about halfway through the book, the whole story changes. It changes from him being picked up by the kind of Gestapo or this the police, they call him, and he's put in some school and he's being interrogated for a lot of reasons having to do with basically uh, problems that the, the, the powers that be are having it with themselves. They have problems inside their network and they're trying to find out who this kid has been talking to and so forth. So anyway, I don't want to describe it much more than that. It is it is one of the best Simenon novels in many ways, especially of the early ones. I tend to prefer all the Simenon late novels more than the early ones. And it's, it's one of the longest and probably the densest, I would say. His books are not very dense, but there's a lot happening in this book. It's a very powerful, emotional book, and he really never lets you out of this kid's head. I always like when writers do that. You know, he really, it's just like you never get out of Maigret's head. 
Simenon basically puts you in a character's head who's undergoing a pretty difficult life at a difficult point in their life. And uh, he doesn't let you out. Uh, and I and I really so I, anyway I really enjoyed it. Beautiful cover. Uh, again, our, our our bathing buddy Howard Curtis uh, translated both of them. I'm just uh, you know continue being a, a Simonon fan, and that will be how I spend my life reading uh, books in the bathtub. There will always be some Simonon to uh, to guide me. Okay, happy bathing. Stay safe. Stay t stay low tech. Low tech or non tech if you can help it. And we'll hopefully have a nice 2023 and watch out for the rain.